Before we look at z-scores, we need to start with an understanding of what a normal distribution is. Using calculus, we have an equation for a normal curve, where x is the independent variable and f of x is the height of the curve, or the dependent variable, which is, of course, a function of x. Finding the area under a curve over a specified interval is a basic calculus problem, which starts with the differential equation that defines the curve and concludes with that which we can use to compute said area over a specified interval. Sorry, I'm just kidding, but that was fun for me. The normal distribution always looks like this, whether it's a picture of scores obtained for reaction times for mice, whether it's a picture of the age of college students in a full-time day program, or whatever it is, normal distributions always look like this. This is the picture of a lot of different variables in nature. We make it particular by giving it two details, a mean and standard deviation. So that's the definition of normal distribution for our purposes. It looks like this, or approximately like this, and it's defined by its mean and standard deviation. Standard deviation is a distance. It goes from here to here. No matter what we're looking at, no matter what the distribution is showing, this distance is one standard deviation. Let's use that understanding. One standard deviation, which is a unit of distance in this picture, is a z-score of one. That's all a z-score is. It's positive or negative based on whether it's above or below the mean, or in the positive or negative direction. Of course, most things in life are not integers, so be sure you can also figure this out when the number is a fraction or a decimal. If my sample score, for example, is 1.4 standard deviations below the mean, then I'd multiply my standard deviation by 1.4, and that's how far my score is below the mean. Let's go with reaction times for mice. Here are those characteristics for the known population of reaction times for mice on some measure, mean of 2.5 and standard deviation 0.3. And here is my mouse. His name is Seymour, and don't judge him, he didn't name himself. In fact, it turns out that he's pretty good on this reaction time measure. His reaction time is 2.08 seconds, and that's awesome because the average is 2.5 seconds. So he's at least better than average. All right, here's Seymour. How many standard deviations is Seymour to the left of the mean? How far is he below the mean? That is his deviation score, which says that he is 0.42 seconds faster than average on this measure, or 0.42 seconds below the mean in this picture. Now, how many standard deviations is Seymour to the left of the mean? He's more than one standard deviation, because that would be 2.2. But he's not two standard deviations over, right? Because that would be 1.9. It's pretty easy to figure out exactly how many standard deviations this score is from the mean. Take a look. Negative 0.42 divided by 0.3 equals negative 1.4. Seymour's score is 1.4 standard deviations to the left of the mean. And remember, with reaction times, quicker is better, which is why I'm so proud of my little Seymour. Let's suppose there's a known distribution of human reaction times to a tap on a person's toe. You may have done this in your introductory psychology course when learning about axons. Or not. Not important. Back to the illustration. For this test, the participant's toe is tapped and time is measured until the person presses a button. Whatever, the story doesn't really matter. I just wanted to make it about reaction times. All right, so this is a known normal distribution. For this example, the mean is 2.5 seconds, and the standard deviation is 0.1. That's all we need in order to draw this thing. So I will do that, and here is the distribution. And now let's say this guy, we'll call him Aladdin. His reaction time is 2.2 seconds. So here is Aladdin. His score is 2.2, and the mean is 2.5. Negative 0.3 is Aladdin's deviation score which says that he's 0.3 seconds faster than average on this test. How many standard deviations is Aladdin to the left of the mean? Aladdin's exactly three standard deviations to the left of the mean. Mathematically, we're doing this. And remember, with reaction times, quicker is better. Yay, Aladdin. All right, let's make use of our standard scores. Who is more impressive, Seymour the mouse or Aladdin the guy? Seymour the mouse, his reaction time was 2.08 seconds. In Aladdin, the guy, his reaction time was 2.2 seconds. Seymour was quicker than Aladdin, right? Not really. That's not really right. Because we cannot compare mice to people. 
Looking at those two distributions, the mice have a lot more variation in how they perform on this measure. Their scores are spread out way more than people's scores are. Do you see that? It's the same picture, it's the same shape, because normal distributions all look like this. But the reaction times for people have a lot less variation than the reaction times for the mice. Now because the mice scores have so much more variation, Seymour's score, while nothing to be ashamed of, is not nearly as impressive as Aladdin's score, even though it looks like Seymour beat Aladdin. The fact that the human reaction times have less variability makes Aladdin's score more impressive. Keep that in mind for future topics, that our sample score here is more impressive because of the relatively small variability in the comparison distribution. Our last topic for today is probability. Remember that the normal distribution always looks like this. And because of that, and because of calculus, using the z-score table, we can look up what percentage of scores is above or below that z-score. The more unusual a sample score is, the less likely it is that we just happened to have drawn that sample by chance. If a sample is extreme enough that the probability of it being that extreme by chance is small, that's when we give some credit to our independent variable. To show you this, here will be the last demonstration in this video, and we're going to stick with Seymour. You see, Seymour was a lab mouse testing a secret vitamin compound designed to improve reaction times in mice. He was given his vitamin since birth, and now at the prime of his life, his reaction time was measured on this scale. What is the probability of just any random mouse getting a score of 2.08 seconds? Forget Seymour and his special vitamin compound for a second. This whole picture is of a known distribution of reaction times for mice in general. Seymour's a mouse, right? So forgetting the vitamin thing, what's the probability that we just randomly have chosen a mouse who's this fast? Let's look at the z-score table to find that probability. Seymour's z-score is negative 1.4. Using the z-score table, I can see probabilities for that score. And I'll be talking about them as percentages, too. 8.08% is the percent in tail. In this case, that's the percent of scores that was even quicker than Seymour, right? And the rest of the 100%, the remaining 91.92% of scores, they're to the right. That's how many mice are slower than Seymour's score. I'm going to round off just for discussion. Basically, if we randomly draw a sample from this known distribution, we would happen to choose a mouse as quick as Seymour 8% of the time. 92% of the time, we'd randomly choose a mouse that is not that impressive. And this is where we usually have a decision to make. Is Seymour's score extreme enough or impressive enough that we can say, you know what, it's unlikely to have occurred by chance if the vitamin compound thing doesn't do anything. I mean, 8% of the time, a mouse is that quick anyway. In psychology, we usually use what's called the 5% level of significance, and that's a sort of cutoff, a line we draw. And beyond that line, we say, all right, if the sample score is this unusual, we're going to give some credit to the independent variable, in this case, the vitamin compound. If it's not past this cutoff, it's just not impressive enough to give credit to the vitamin compound. Using that 5% level in this case, Seymour's score is not impressive enough for us to say that it's unlikely to have occurred by chance. Based on this data, the vitamin compound does not improve reaction times. And hey, maybe we're wrong about the vitamin compound, but from this data, we have to decide that the vitamin compound doesn't improve reaction times. You always want to find the probability of getting a certain score on a specific distribution. If any of this remains unclear, please review a second time or consult any statistics textbook on the topic of z-scores and their meaning and value, because this mini-video lecture on z-scores is done.